Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to bring you part one in a four part series on curses. And in part one in this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of curses, what they are, and what causes them. The first type of curse that I would like to speak about is an energetic curse. An energetic curse is being exposed to energy, which causes you the symptoms of having a curse. So being exposed to energy or an energetic curse can come about when you are spending a lot of time in a location which has a lot of heavy or negative or unwanted energies or vibrations. This can be a piece of land, this can be a home, this can be a business, for example. Um, types of causes of this kind of energetic exposure could be that atrocities have occurred on that land, such as the atrocities which have occurred to indigenous Americans. It could be that it was a Indian burial ground at one point. It could be that it is a home or business or location which has had a lot of fighting or discard, discord or perhaps violence occur there. Other ways that an energetic curse could arise would be being exposed to individuals around you who are carrying with them a lot of heavy energy or unwanted energy or negative energy. This could be a lot of fighting. This could just be a lot of negativity. Now, if you are a particularly sensitive person, such as a super sensitive or an empath, for example, then it may be easier for you or you may be particularly sensitive to picking up those kinds of energies and carrying them with you. This could also occur in a situation where you have been exposed to something particularly traumatic or particularly violent, especially if it is um, surprising to you in some way, like an accident, for instance. Now, the only way that a situation like that would end up turning into an energetic curse is if you were not able to resolve those emotions or resolve the incident within yourself or resolve the energetic flow within yourself after having gone through the event. The way that that would turn into a curse-like situation is if you continue to carry that event with you or continue to carry the emotions from that event with you um, afterwards without having any kind of resolution or any kind of healing or any kind of closure for yourself. Um, in some traditions, people would say that that is due to soul loss and that perhaps what you would be in need of is a soul retrieval. Um, I would also like to state that in terms of being an empath or a super sensitive, there are definitely ways to protect yourself energetically or to energetically shield in order to protect yourself from those emotions and vibrations and energies around you. I never want to give the impression that empaths or super sensitives or very sensitive people are in any way um, weakened or particularly victimized or at a disadvantage. In fact, um, we are at an advantage, especially when we are empowered and know how to use those abilities and know how to work with them. Moving on to emo emotional curses. Emotional curses have a little bit of overlap with energetic curses, but Emotional curses are usually due to traumatic situations which we have been through, which are typically not just one event, but um, serious situations we have been through such as abuse, abusive relationships or abusive childhoods, or perhaps we've been in some particularly um, difficult relationships or we've had a relationship break up that we were unable to come to terms with. Basically, an emotional curse is when we're carrying with us emotions that we're unable to resolve or to heal or to release or let go of. Perhaps we don't have a safe outlet for our emotional expression. Perhaps we're unaware of how to deal with our emotions or how to release our emotions in a healthy way. 
Perhaps we don't feel um, that those around us are receptive to our emotions. Perhaps we feel that we're not able to speak up for ourselves. In all of these kinds of cases, when we have emotions building up inside of us that we do not resolve or express or work through, they become emotional, they become energetic blockages within our bodies they turn emotional blockages turn into energetic blockages which are not only existing within our bodies they are existing within our energy they are existing on the spiritual or the metaphysical or the energetic plane as well now that is an example of an emotional curse moving on to a spiritual curse a spiritual curse can occur when we have a spiritual relationship which is out of alignment. For example, we have made some sort of dedication or some sort of oath to a specific deity or a specific entity, a specific spirit, and we have not followed through on that. Now, that doesn't mean that the spirit entity or deity is vengeful in some way. It means that there is something off in that relationship and therefore spiritual energy is not flowing the way that it should. Connectivity is not there the way that it should. And therefore, our prayers or our rituals or our spells aren't coming to fruition or the work or the relationship that we're trying to work on with that specific entity or spirit is not working out for us they are no longer receptive etc that is when we are feeling a spiritual curse another example of these spiritual curses is when um, we have a responsibility to our ancestors or a deceased loved one that we are either unaware of or that we are unreceptive to. Perhaps there is a spirit that is trying to get through to us and we are unreceptive to it. We are ignoring their messages. We're ignoring their requests. We're ignoring the signs that they are sending us. We're asking for something that is completely out of alignment with these signs and the messages that they are sending us. We are being... Um, we are putting up blockages. We are being, um, we are fighting against the current instead of going with the flow. We're trying to force things in a different direction instead of flowing with things, okay? That is when we can cause ourselves to feel a spiritual curse. Another type of curse is a spiritual attack. This can be intentional or unintentional, meaning that it can be sent by somebody else to us, which is very, very rare, let me say. It. That's very rare. It would take a very um, powerful, very in-tuned practitioner to send a vengeful or aggressive or negative spirit to attack you. Um, many people may claim to be able to do such things. In my experience, that would be something that is very rare. It can also be unintentional, meaning that you have exposed yourself to spirits or perhaps you have just been exposed to spirits that are, are not um, wholly benevolent, spirits that perhaps want to feed on your energy or spirits that want to manipulate you in some way, spirits that want to play with your life and see what happens. They want to influence you to make specific kinds of decisions just because it is an experiment for them. There are all kinds of ways that spirits can interfere in our lives if we are not protecting ourselves or if we become exposed to spirits who are interested in such things and or are not evolved spirits. These are examples of a spiritual attack. Many people do undergo the symptoms of spiritual attack. However, it is not as common as many people believe it is. And it is very it is very easy and very doable to protect yourself from a spiritual attack. A circumstantial curse. A circumstantial curse would be a situation where you have been, your circumstances have been kind of piling up against you. You have been through difficulty after difficulty after difficulty, okay? Or perhaps you've had a difficult childhood, or perhaps you, you've grown up in a difficult area, or perhaps you've been exposed to a lot of racism. 
Or perhaps you see that all of the people around you keep having difficulties all the time. This ends up building up inside of you and gets into your head, gets into your mindset, gets into your world belief, your worldview. That doesn't mean that it is your fault that you have these beliefs or this worldview or this mindset. However, it does mean that you can come to a place where you can become aware of it and you can work on changing it. Circumstantial is something that is not your fault. Things that you have been exposed to that lead you to believe and to feel that you are always going to be cursed, that your life is always going to be difficult, that you are always going to struggle. And then that mindset, that belief becomes the thing that perpetuates and continues the curse because you expect it to happen, you believe it will happen, it will continue to happen. As I have stated, it doesn't mean that these kinds of events to begin with are your fault. They are not your fault. However, one of the most difficult things to come to terms with is that even when things are not our fault, even when we are exposed to abuse, exposed to injustice, exposed to unfair situations in the world, it is still our responsibility to heal ourselves. We still have to take responsibility to better ourselves and to heal ourselves and working on our mindset is one aspect of that. A familial or generational curse is something that's going to overlap with circumstantial curses, but it's specifically related to our families, to our generations. Um, When we are coming up in families that have undergone a lot of strife, such as ancestral trauma, right? Um, such as a lot of racism, a lot of injustice, or perhaps there is abuse that has always run in our family. Perhaps there is alcoholism that has always run in our family. Perhaps our family has always been very poor. These kinds of um, these kinds of generational difficulties that perpetuate throughout time, that is considered a generational or a familial curse. And that is something that needs to be broken and can be broken when we begin to heal ourselves as well as when we begin to work with our ancestors. Working with our ancestors is a way of healing our entire family. Healing ourselves is a way of healing our entire family and also breaking the curse, breaking the pattern so that it doesn't continue into future generations. The last type of curse is a metaphysical slash magical curse. This is a curse that is sent to somebody intentionally through magic, or through energy work, through some kind of metaphysical means such as um, any kind of magic or um, any kind of magical practice, right? So this is when somebody wants to take revenge or somebody is envious of you or somebody is just hateful towards you and wants to send something your way to make your life difficult when somebody puts a curse on you. Um, There are definitely ways to protect yourself from this curse as well. I do not want to perpetuate fear. So please remember that with all of these curses, there are ways to heal, there are ways to protect yourself, and protection is not as difficult or as complicated as some would lead us to believe or as some believe it is. Um, Protecting yourself from a magical or metaphysical curse can be as simple as asking for protection on a regular basis from your own ancestors or from your own guides or from spirit or God or the universe, okay? Um, Just keeping in mind personal protection, being a part of your your normal routine as well as cleansings and purification being a part of your normal routines, this will go a long, long way, if not 100% of the way in protecting you from, from metaphysical and magical curses as well as many of these other kinds of curses, okay? Um, I would also like to say some of these curses are very rare. We are often led to believe that it is very common or very easy to become cursed. Actually, many of these curses are very rare. Um, I would say about 10% of the people that come to me thinking that they are cursed are actually cursed. So, you know, out of... um, 
it's a very small amount of people who are actually cursed that come to me believing or feeling that they are cursed. And the reason that I have broken down all these different types of curses is because this is an unconventional way to think of curses. It's, the thing is, these are the things that cause the symptoms of feeling like we are cursed. It's really important for us to recognize that there are so many different ways to acquire these symptoms and to experience these kinds of cursed conditions, and that it's not all about somebody doing Ill, having ill attentions or doing bad or evil or negative magic against us. It's not all about someone or something or the universe or some spirit being against us. There are many other causes of these kinds of feelings, these kinds of energies, these kinds of symptoms, these kinds of experiences. It's really important for us to be aware of that and to be educated about that so that we know how to prevent it, we know how to treat it, and we know how to work it on it in our lives starting within ourselves okay so i hope that this is a helpful introduction about um, what are some of the causes of feeling cursed and feeling these symptoms and experiences of curses and I hope that you stay tuned because in part two in our series on curses, we are going to talk about the symptoms of a curse. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay blessed.